I make this video so you understand how and what you see from your rubric grades on any given rubric assignment uh, in my course. This particular rubric has eight rubric items on it. This is the Linux versus Windows essay in the class, and you can see there are eight rubric items ranging from worth five points to 15 points, most of them are worth five, and there's eight items on them. So I go through and grade your essay based on those eight items, and what you will see in your grade is this, basically those eight items broken down by points. I don't usually put this on here. I would put this on here just for this video so you would see kind of how they align. But I take those eight rubric items in order and put the number plus the number plus the number to come out with the total that you get for the grade. This one is worth 50 points and the student lost three at the end and they were in the area of works cited and mechanics on this particular assignment. So the student would say, ah, oh, I got everything right, except for that. It's really easy to grade with a rubric for me, uh, and I can go through and look at that. So some of these are semi-opinion, although not really, right? The introduction, the introduction presents the overall topic and draws the audience into the essay. And as I go to Mr. Smith's and I read this, I clearly get an idea of what the uh, topic of this essay is in Mr. Smith's essay. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to do content last. Conclusion, I jump straight to the conclusion and then I read the last paragraph and say, what did Mr. Smith say? In conclusion, I believe that Windows is the better choice for me. Clearly states his choice. There's no ambiguity there. And then I can read a little bit on why uh, he felt in the end that that was his final choice. Reachers, research and note taking, taking at least one article from the course is cited. And I can easily go up and I sometimes just do a control F and look for a parentheses and it takes me right to the site. There is a site right there from Livewire article from Fisher. I easily know that he gets five points for research and note taking. Text and spacing, font size is 10 and it's or 10 to 12 and it's double spaced. I can click right on there, see it's 12, and I can visually see it's double spaced by just going down arrow and seeing that he did use double spacing. He didn't use single spacing with enters at the end. Again, five points on that rubric. MLA elements, header, and title. I can easily go up to the top and say, ah, he's got his name with the page numbers in the uh, header section and he's got the title up here. Everything's double spaced in there the way he should have put his items. Another five pointer. Work cited. The work cited section is correct and on a second page and oh my goodness I went down here and it's not. All that would have taken is to go right here and say insert and go to break and go to page break and Bob's your uncle. Now you've got full points for that but unfortunately he did not do that, so he did not get full points for that item. Lost one point there for the work site section being formatted correctly, but not on a separate page like it should be. And then the last one is writing mechanics. Actually, this was supposed to be three points. I need to fix the rubric on that. So it goes five, four, three, zero for five or more errors on it. This is one of those examples where if you had um, added um, the um google add-on that i have which I, I already told you guys to to add that to yours it easily points out all the place and this is grammarly where number one um that is not wrong okay that all through so i skipped that one that one didn't count at home that doesn't have to be hyphenated microsoft does have to be capitalized that one's wrong awesome comma mm, but is free of down which is awesome because mm, I'm going to call that one a um, preference. However, compared to each other are separate words. That's another mistake. That's number two on there. Off-brand, it's saying should be hyphenated. I'm not going to count that as either. But I've got a bunch of names, comma, and other things that you can use. That definitely belongs in there. You get the idea. If I had used um, Grammarly, and I'm going to show you at the end of this video how to add Grammarly so that you always have it checking your stuff. Um, then many of these things would have been, been easy to fix. Some of them, like I said, are not um, 
uh, really ones that I'm going to count wrong because the amount of developers, it's like number sounds better uh, as a quantifier on that. It'll take off of those. But in the end, it ended up being a 3.1 as opposed to uh, a four or five pointer on this one. And many of these, would, you would have the easy ability to just look at. So that's how I do it. I'm going to add Grammarly in there in a second. But the last thing I do is content because this one takes a little more time. In the content one, it says the content explains a minimum of three different ways of comparing them. Well, this author took and said, hey, I want to make sure you see the three. So I'm going to title the sections not required in an MLA essay, but you certainly can. So we broke them into affordability, compatibility, secure, and security. Clearly showed all three and talked about those three in his essay, which is why I got full points for that as well. And then on the grade, you can see this, and it got a 47 and a 50. So this is what you'll see. This is what you need to understand from that just by referencing that. That's how all of your grades will come to you for every rubric item. I will always put it in the feedback comment so you can look and see which ones you lost points at. If you have something there, like Mr. Poole, I, I did do, do that. Um, I think I should get more points for this one. You may feel free to make that, um, make that argument with me. Uh, all you do is set up an appointment during intervention and I will listen to your argument and sometimes change your grade if I feel like, you know what, you made a good argument for that. So none of these grades are set in stone. Also on something like this on a paper, I will give you partial points for corrections, not full points. So if I go and grade you and say, this is what you've got, and you say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna fix that four to a, to, um, just put that page break in there. I'm not going to give you five points, but I'm going to give you four and a half. And half a point sometimes makes a difference on a grade. And on ones like this, if you fixed all those, I wouldn't give you five points, but I'd certainly give you four points. This essay was a good example of a really nice essay, written well and broken out really well. So probably this person will be happy with a 94% that they got. But let's look at, at how to add um, Grammarly to your uh, version of Chrome. So first of all, I've already got Grammarly installed and you can see that right here is my Grammarly button and Grammarly is always on whenever I'm doing something in Google Docs. When I click on that, you can see my quick settings. It's always going to make suggestions. It's already we're always writing in American English. But the question is, how did I get Grammarly there? So I'm going to go to the Chrome Web Store. Let me just go Google Chrome Web Store. Top, and the top thing you see is the Chrome Web Store. Now here at National Trail, we've already got a NTLS Chrome app list that has all of the ones that are already approved. So what do we type Grammarly in there in the G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y? We see Grammarly come right up here in the top. And if I kept a click on it, I've already got it installed on mine. That's why the, this says remove from Chrome. You don't have it, it adds to Chrome. Once you've added it to Chrome, you can pin it. And if we click right here, you can see which ones I've pinned. If you pin it, it stays here on your bar. If you don't pin it, it hides itself. I have the ones that I wanna see all the time pinned. On, the, on my bar and once it's pinned, then you, when you click on it, you so can see. I can check it, I have it turned on, I have it checked for spelling, I have it checked for phrases, I have it checked for paid emojis, I'll turn that off, we won't hear about that, and American English, and I could go premium if I want to pay, and I obviously don't want to pay. I highly suggest adding Grammarly, and anytime you do a writing assignment for somebody, if you drop it into Google Docs, you can use Grammarly to help you correct it. Also does uh, emails as well, but you can use that and then put it into Word because it does a better job than some of the Word tools that we've got. That is it for understanding how rubric grades are put into the Moodle gradebook and what these numbers mean in your feedback comments so that you now understand what the grades really mean. Thanks.